So now let's get back to cars. I, I promise I'm done making my goofy videos about myself and uh, I don't like doing that. But I, you know, again, I felt like I needed to do it for the, for the bio page on the website. So as requested by many, back to cars. Um, this is a video that I, I, needed to, I, I think I need to do um, or I would like to do just for the organization of the, uh, of the GT3 page. Um, I just did one on the, on the M3. Um, but I'm going to take you through um, the options that I have uh, and Porsche's option list is pages and pages long. So you start with a sticker price of 130 and you can go up to 180 on these things. So there's $50,000 plus or minus in options that you can add to, to, a, to a GT3 or a Carrera S or really most, most Porsches. So, um, I'm going to take you through that list of why I uh, of of what I have. I guess this one isn't as much why because I didn't order this car. Um, again, to cue you in, if you if you if this is the first video you're watching, I had a Carrera S. The Carrera S had an engine problem uh, that was sort of undiagnosable. It was driving me crazy. So I did, my wife, <laughs> after me kicking and screaming, she let me um, take the loss rather than trying to fight Porsche. And, um, and I took a loss, traded the Carrera S, and this GT3 had, had sort of shown up at the, at the dealership. Um, this is a 2014, so it has the new engine, the extra year warranty, um, which I feel comfortable with. I have 6,000 miles on the thing, it drives like a dream. So I'm not worried about it. Um, but, but so I didn't get to option this car out, but it had it had 90 ish percent of the options that I wanted a couple of extras. I'll talk to you about that. Uh, both. I'm kind of glad that I have now. Um, but uh, I'm going to take you through the, the listing of things and, and why I why I have why I like what I have or why I would have chosen it had I had I had that, that option. I've actually done a write up on this on Renlist. Um, I haven't done a video. So um, I wanted to do a video for the for, for the uh, the GT3 page. So I'm going to take you through that. Camera. As I pan across the car um, and I get into sort of a you know, brighter area with the lights and then more shadowed areas, um, you know, Sapphire Blue actually has multiple personalities. So the car looks different depending on the light. And to be honest with you, I was chicken to order this color. Uh, this is the color I wanted. This is the color I was hoping to have. Um, I'll sit down here. Hopefully, I'm not chopping my head off. So, again, to sort of rewind and sort of explain to you what you know, what what was happening in the the, the Carrera S, I was trading. I was trying to get a decent price for it, and but I wanted to trade it in, uh, save the tax. And selling a private party really didn't work for me because I didn't want to screw somebody else with a with a with a problem that again wasn't catastrophic, but the car was just stuttering and shuddering and was driving me nuts. So I was working with a local dealer and, and going to trade my car. I sort of solidified a 2015 allocation. I was going to order one, and I was back and forth between sapphire blue and white, and um, and I was literally on the phone with. My buddy who works at um, works at uh, uh, Porsche of Ocala, and he, uh, you know, I'm like ready to give him a, a non-refundable five thousand dollar deposit. I was going to order white, and um, and I got a call on my phone from Heiner, who sold me Heiner from or Porsche of Orlando. He sold me my my Carrera S, and uh, he said, "Look, man, I know you've been looking for a GT3, uh, and." I think I have what you want. Something just showed up. I was like, nah, there's no way. And so I said, well, hold on, Michael. Let, let, me, let me talk to, let me get the spec sheets from Heiner. I said, Heiner, send me the, send me the sheets. He sent me the sheet, and, and I went sort of down the list. One, two, three, check, 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 check. Yes, 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 yes. Had you know, basically every single thing I want. And, uh, and Sapphire Blue, so this sort of forced me to get Sapphire Blue, which is, again, what I wanted, but I was just a little bit too, too scared to, to order. So the, you know, the car, the blue, has sort of multiple personalities. It's, it's a metallic. Um, it obviously, it stands out in pictures and things like that. Um, I tend to prefer white or silver. Uh, but blue has sort of always been my, my favorite color. 
and I had a blue M3, I had a blue Civic, um, Electron Blue Civic SI, I had the, 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 the Le Mans Blue M3. Um, so I've always sort of had a blue car in my life. And so it, I'm glad it sort of worked out in, in that I've got the, the, the metallic blue paint. Um, it's actually really, really dirty right now. I've drove in the sort of the light rain, there's bugs all over it. Um, so the, but you, I'm guessing you really can't tell uh, on cameras, bugs all over the place. Um, so if I could do it again, if I ordered another GT3, like if I got rid of this one and got another one, I'd absolutely order Sapphire Blue. Uh, the funny thing is I think I had <clears throat> like the second or third one, so there really weren't very many pictures of Sapphire Blue, and then of course I blew up the internet with, uh, <laughs> with tons of Sapphire Blue pictures, but um, hides dirt really well, shines up really well. Um, the Porsche paint is way better than any other paint I've ever had. Um, you know, they do a decent job. There's some orange pale, but it's not horrible. It's not as bad as sort of BMW or Audi or some of the other German manufacturers. It's certainly not as bad as the Japanese cars. Um, and the paint's pretty solid, pretty hard. Not as hard as like a Corvette or some other cars like that with super hard paint, but it, it did correct really nicely. When I got the car, I didn't need to compound it. The only thing I needed to compound was the rear deck and the wing. There were some wet sanding marks that I had to, had to compound. The rest of the car, all I did was a Menzerna SF4000 and, and with, a, with a slightly stiffer pad and jeweled up nicely. And I, so I haven't had to actually do a correction. Hey, baby girl. You coming to, coming to be in the video with us? You're supposed to be napping. Aren't you tired? Look, baby girl's standing up now. She's almost ready to walk. What you doing? Can you say hi to everybody? Say hi. Whoa, don't kick the car. Say hi to everybody. No, 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 no. That's Daddy's. She loves the the goofy wind, windshield squirter or the headlight squirters. So the next option we can talk about, which is one of the very few free options in the world of Porsche, <laughs> um, is the extended range fuel tank. And I'll kind of knock out two options at once. I mean, this is something I wouldn't have purchased, but it's a fake plastic or fake aluminum, so it's a plastic. Um, gas cap. I think this thing's like 150 bucks. Has some fake screws and stuff. Actually, I think the screws might be real, but the uh, I don't know if they're plastic or not. I think they're actually metal. Um, you know, one of the things I always do with my cars is you know there's always that leash that connects the the gas cap to the to the car, and inevitably what happens is you end up dropping it, and it, I'd rather it drop on the ground than drop and hit the hit the car, so I always cut that leash off, take that leash off the car, just pull that, that ring off. Um, but this has the extended range fuel tank. Um, this thing takes the 24, 23 point something gallons of gas. I mean, standard, just filling it up. I feel like I'm filling up, a, filling up a Ram diesel or something. The thing just keeps going and going and going and going. You know, I wouldn't have gotten the, the, the extended range fuel tank, but now I'm glad I have it. I mean, it doesn't hurt. If I wanted to be lighter, I just, well, if I wanted to be lighter, I probably wouldn't put a stereo in it. I wouldn't put a roll cage in it. Um, but if I wanted to be lighter, just put less gas in it. Um, I actually kind of one of the few people who likes to go and get gas. I don't know why, it's just like therapeutic for me. So extended range fuel tank was a free option that the car had that I wouldn't have optioned that it had it, and now I'm glad it does. So like most of the options I wouldn't have ordered it, it um, I'm glad it has it. So let's talk about carbon ceramics. Um, you know, I love them. <laughs> I think if you've heard my thoughts on the, uh, on the M3 and, and carbon ceramics and how I'll never be able to go back, um, I mean, it's something about the, it, the, the yellow calipers actually dictated the color of the car that I was going to get because I think yellow works with blue, yellow works with, um, with black, obviously, but black is not a good color for me. Um, yellow works with, um, you know, white and, and silver, GT silver and, and rhodium silver. Uh, yellow doesn't, for me, it doesn't really work with red. Um, looks a little bit too, uh, too, too, there's too much of a contrast there, but I mean, it doesn't look bad. It's just a little too much for me. Um, and I want to get a red GT3 at some point in my life, but um, um, the yellow carbon ceramics, I guess you could have this redone, but I don't, you know, that, that just doesn't really make sense to me. So the, the, the carbon ceramic option is obviously extremely expensive. You know, theoretically, for, for a guy like me who's not, I'm not going to track the car, 
Um, I'm going to do some spirited drives, do some mountain driving, things like that, back road driving, driving to my office occasionally. Um, the carbon ceramics should last the life of my car, so I shouldn't have to worry about um, changing rotors and having that huge expense. I mean, it does worry me a little bit. You know, last thing I want to do is have to change out a bunch of rotors. Um, I guess if there was one of them, you know, it's, the, the chance of, of them all failing would be pretty slim. Um, but I, as far as I know, as long as you change the pads at about 50% of, of their wear, the pads are not really all that more expensive than any, any normal pad. Um, bleed, bleed the, you know, bleed them and uh, bleed the brake lines and, and you should be good to go. So um, the carbon ceramic option is something that I will always check. Even if I have to sacrifice other things, if it is an option, I'll, I'll choose it. Um, I may change that tune if I had one of them that was a problem. Uh, and now that I have eight, technically eight carbon ceramic rotors on the, across the two cars, there's a good chance that I'm going to gonna have, a, have a problem. But I'm, I'm hoping that you know, since these are sort of the third generation, I think these are third generation carbon ceramics from, from, um, from Porsche, I'm kind of hoping I'm, I'm safe. But I just love the cleanliness of them. You know, the, even the, uh, everything about them, there's no sort of obviously no rust um, because there's no, there's no metal. Um, but the, the, you know, the, the casing of the rotor is fantastic. I, I just love, love the way it looks. I'll talk more about center locks and, and some of the sort of regular factory stuff when I do a review on the car. I, I guess I'll do that as well. Um, but since we're here, let's talk um, wheels. Obviously, you don't have a wheel choice on, maybe not obvious, but if you're a, a GT3 guy, you know that you don't have any choice of wheels. The only thing you have is choice of color. You can do the normal sort of light light uh, you know silver i'm just not a huge fan of i always like darker wheels you know some people it's it's a personal preference i don't dislike lighter wheels it's just that i like the look of darker wheels better um, this is the platinum satin so it's a nice sort of satin finish i prefer satin on my wheels it doesn't tend to scratch you know because with your wheels and dirt and rocks it's it's a lot harder to, to keep it from scratching versus the rest of the paint of the car especially if you're shoving brushes and things in there um, and I just love the satin look. It just, it just, it just suits my preference well. So this was an option, platinum satin. You could also do gloss black. Um, I'm going to do satin black. There's a bunch of chipping. Sort of the way that these wheels, the, the way the blades are, I'm guessing they just catch rocks uh, a, a lot easier than, than most wheels. So there's all kinds of beat up areas on these wheels, which as you might imagine, drives me a little nutty. Um, so I'm going to um, I'm going to have them refinished. Probably when I need new rear tires, um, I'm going to send them somewhere. I'm not sure yet, but it really shouldn't be too costly. You know, maybe 150 or 200 dollars a wheel, um, maybe less. I know one of my buddies just had his done for about 700. Um, so I mean, I know that's a lot of money, but it's not. You know, it's, it's not like buying a new set of wheels. It would cost thousands and thousands of dollars. So. Um, I'm going to let them continue to get chipped up and then you know, I'm guessing I'll probably need new rear tires at you know, eight to 10,000 miles. So um, I'll, I'll just do that all at once, take the wheels off and, and take them somewhere and have them, have them painted. I will paint them, not powder coat them. Um, you know, paint's lighter and, and supposedly powder coating isn't as good for, for wheels after they've already sort of been cast or, or in this case forged. Um, I'm sure if you do it right, you can probably, probably, probably works, but um, I'm hoping if I do some different paint, maybe it won't, maybe it won't chip as, as, as easily as this has. So that's another option that I think is cool that I like. Another option that I have is the front axle lift. And what I thought I'd do is just sort of show you the difference, how it works. I want you to see the wheel gap. Let's do it from this angle here. This is another thing I wouldn't have chosen. It adds a bunch of weight, costs a lot of money. You know, I'm, I'm not disappointed I have it. Um, it's 3,500 bucks for the front axle lift. And honestly, I mean, everybody talks about how low this car is. It's not, my M3 is lower. I mean, this is the highest car I've had in a long time. So, I, and, and I live in Central Florida, which is super flat, and we don't have giant curbs, and you know, old, like older cities would have, like you know, Boston or Philadelphia, where you got all kinds of old giant curbs and things to go over. Um, so, you know, this, this particular setup is not really all that necessary for me. Again, it's not a bad thing to have. 
I'm actually going to lower the car a few clicks. Um, the car is equipped with factory coilovers. Um, so uh, what I do is thought I'd show you the difference. It raises it like, well, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or something like that. I think I have to start the car in order for it to go up. I'm RC Hill, your car. Yeah, it started. You can see the car's lifted up. Now it's at its maximum height. Set it back down. I don't want to open the garage door because it's hopefully it didn't dump enough carbon monoxide, but that gives you an idea. The front axle lift raises the car up a little bit and um, it you know, comes in handy. It'll probably come in handy when I lower the car. It only allows us to lower about a half an inch. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I retain a zero degree rake when I lower it. So I'll lower the front and, and rear equally in order to keep zero rake from, from front to rear. But um, cool little option. You know, if I got an RS or if I got another one, I probably wouldn't buy it. Um, again, my, this, the front lip on this car is a solid inch higher than my M3, and my M3 doesn't hit anything. As long as you sort of know how to drive, it shouldn't be too, shouldn't be too uh, earth shattering. To, you shouldn't have an issue breaking the, breaking the bumper. The only problem with this is the lip is integrated into the bumper, so if you smash the lip, you're probably going to smash the bumper, and it's a lot of money to replace. So let's talk about the headlights. So there's two options here. One is LED headlights. Second is, I'm surprised you have to pay for this, but I mean, I don't want chrome on my car if I have the choice. And there's, you know, there's some sort of chrome looking stuff on the headlights, which I, you know, I'd like to get rid of. Um, they didn't have the option for black LEDs. Um, basically, they, where they take the housing and, and black it out. Um, the LEDs does do one thing that sort of annoys me a bit. The, there's four LEDs here that are daytime running lights. So when the lights are off, the daytime running lights are on. When the lights are on, this sort of thing illuminates the whole thing. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's a little too, it's not crisp enough for me. And, and then what happens is these daytime running lights don't turn on. And I actually really like these as a nice sort of straight line. So one of the things I'd like to figure out here coming up is uh, I like to do some, some coding to the car to turn these on and leave these on. So have them all on during daytime. So, so leave all daytime running lights on at the same time. Um, and then, um, but again, the, the, I prefer Xenon by Xenon to, to, to LED. I mean, um, I, you know, I've had some arguments on some of the forums about uh, how I prefer Xenon and why. And it's, I, I think for my eye, or my eyes, it's, it's the color spectrum. Um, these, these don't, um, LEDs don't offer as wide of a color spectrum. So for me, it's, it's actually harder to see, even though they're, they're certainly brighter, uh, for me, it's harder to see. Um, it's more fatiguing to me uh, than it is with, with, with by Xenon. And, and I think it has something to do with the sort of the, the allowable color spectrum that that the, that the, you know, maybe it's the, the color temp of the lights or, or whatever, but I mean, I don't drive this at night all that often anyway, so it really doesn't matter all that much, but um, LED is an option that, you know, if I had a choice, the only thing that's cool about the LEDs is you have the two similar projectors where the regular lights just have the, the traditional high beam, uh, which, which is, doesn't kind of look as clean as this. Um, what I might do if I keep this car long term is I would maybe swap these out and do um, the, the black black version. I think it's pretty expensive to do that, um, but I know it's a pretty easy install. Um, uh, but but you know maybe I'm you know, I'm not bent out of shape about these. I think they look fine. Um, but uh, but you know by Xenon LED. I mean I don't know if it's worth 3,500 bucks for these, but you know at some point they'll be standard. And then you know painting this is a must for me. It's a couple hundred dollars to paint the the stupid. I wish I could eliminate that. I you don't. Know, I know it's a sort of one, it's kind of like yellow reflectors or orange reflectors in the U.S. are standard. I think these are standard in, in Europe, which is stupid. You know, I mean, how, what do you need to squirt your headlights off? I mean, I guess if you're driving down a dirt road or something, but um, it's kind of a dumb thing that I wish it was cleaner. I wish I could just get rid of that, but you can't. So you have to paint it to try to hide it as much as possible because, because it comes chrome naturally or normally. 
Another option that I have that I would throw in the trash is I have automatically dimming mirrors. Now, I don't think the side mirrors dim, but I can't really show you automatic, the automatic dimming of them. Uh, an integrated rain sensor. Um, I don't know, the sensors never work well for me. I just thought I'd show you a picture of the, you know, how the, uh, the, the headlight or the side view mirrors look. Um, but honestly, the, the integrated rain sensor and, the, and the, the, the automatically dimming rear view mirror is useless to me. Um, it's like five, six, seven hundred dollars or something like that. And I, I don't ever notice it, um, but it has it. And I just didn't have that choice. But that's something I would have not checked off. I tend to leave those driver assistance options off if I have the choice. In my opinion, it makes it lighter and uh, cheaper. So it's a win-win. Since we're here, let's talk interior options. I'm gonna use my flashlight to kind of um, highlight some things. So notice the, the pedals, aluminum pedals. Yeah, a little more light here. I love these. I mean, I, I think it just goes well with the rest of the interior of the car. You know, it matches the trim and all the, all the rest of it. This was an, a, an option I would have never thought to purchase, um, but I'm really pleased with the aluminum pedals. I, I really like them. They, you would think that they're slippery, but they're not. They have a, a real um, sort of texture to them. So, and it's not like you're using the, the clutch. So I never had any issues with the foot slipping off the brake, even with wet feet. Really, really works well. And, and it matches the rest of the, you know, the rest of the trim in the car, the brushed aluminum. It just kind of flows well with the, the trim in the center, the, the silver in the sort of the back of the seats and, and, the, and the rest of the car, and the, then the silver trim. So in, in, in continuing that silver theme, the guy had ordered um, silver seat belts to match sort of the stitching, the rest of the car. It actually looks, it looks I think it looks great. Um, I'm not a big fan of different colored seat belts. I'd rather just make the seat belts invisible. I don't know why everybody loves red seat belts, but you know, I guess, I guess I shouldn't say I don't know why. I do know why. Um, but you know, I would prefer, much prefer to have my seat belts hidden. Uh, but in the interior of this car, I think it adds a little bit of a, a touch that 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 makes it look, I guess, unique. Um, another option, I have PCM, so I have the the Porsche control module, which is not a zero cost option. You can get it without that to make you know make the car lighter. I don't use the navigation ever. It's you know it's like most car navigation is not very good. Um, and then the PCM I have in combination with the Sound Package Plus, which of course I've yanked out. Um, if you don't get Sound Package Plus, you get like a an even worse version of the of the factory stereo. So um, I have the Sound Package Plus option, which of which I've since torn out and done done my own aftermarket system. Um, Another option is you can get Alcantara steering wheel, and I think they've changed this option now. Where uh, it is a little weird that I have the Alcantara on the center, on the on the stock or on the the gear shifter, and then I have the leather steering wheel. But because uh, the option of full leather on the dash, full leather in the doors, so the full leather option is through three thousand bucks or so. Um, the seats come in leather and Alcantara no matter what, but to get leather, the leather dash and some of the other le leather trimmings around here, around the center console and things, you have to, you have to purchase that, that full leather as an option. I, you know, again, I was torn on whether I'd get that or not. I guess if you're a hundred and something thousand dollars in, what's another three grand? Um, but you got to draw the line somewhere. because, Like I said, there's $50,000 worth of options in this thing. Um, so the leather sport design steering wheel is it is a, is a, um, uh, an option that you can a zero cost option so you can you can choose that um, and I like that I, I prefer the leather I just feel like Alcantara tends to wear out um, I do like the Alcantara on the seats because it's so hot in Florida I just feel like I'm, I'm not as hot I don't have heated seats I don't have cooled seats cooled seats is not an option on this car um, but I, I you know I don't have have any of that stuff another really ridiculous thing in this car is the light design package and <laughs> I, yeah, I, people always check it off, but it's useless. It has some LEDs here. It has an LED here, here, and in the back. And it's like $690 or five, yeah, I think it's $690. So it's one of those options that you can have back. I wish I could give it back, but you can't. 
another option that I'm sure when the guy ordered the car, I, I don't know him, I don't know who ordered it, but uh, right here on the, um, the airbag cover and the, so this, this part here, this airbag cover and this little piece of leather is called the extended door leather package. And I think he probably ordered it because he thought for sure, you know, maybe in order to get that, because, you know, when the guys ordered them originally, they didn't really know what, what the options were specifically. And I don't think any of the dealerships knew what the, what the deal was, but it was like seven, almost $700 for this and this in leather. <laughs> so, you know, it's one of those things that you can, you can have it, um, but it is, you know, it's there and we have it. And um, I think most people at this point don't, don't order that extended leather package because it's, you know, otherwise it's just basic plastic. Discussing the last couple of options, I have, um, these kind of go hand in hand, I guess, they're separate options, but I have the, the fire extinguisher, which, you know, whatever, I, I wouldn't get it, but I guess it makes it look cool, it makes it look like you're serious. And then the smoking package, is basically that gives you a, it's a free option that gives you a cover here uh, and a lighter um, so that's a sort of a no-brainer option otherwise you got like a little hole so those are the those are the last options you can see here um, leather wise make sure I'm zoomed out enough so if you don't get the full leather package I mean who the heck's gonna it's nice to be sitting in a nice cockpit, but you know, if I was tracking this thing a lot, I wouldn't care about leather. Uh, floor mats also, you have to select that, but that's a no cost option. And you know, the, the dash is leather, this is leather, this is leather. Um, the, the, the door trim, the doors are leather, um, the tops of the doors. Otherwise it would all be sort of a normal, um, you know, that normal sort of plasticky stuff that most cars have, which whatever, you know, I'm, I'm okay with. Uh, but it is nice to the stitching across the stitching runs all the way around the interior and and so that you know it's a thirty five hundred dollar option it isn't too bad you could change the stitching to red which i don't like red stitching um but that was a pretty expensive option you know several thousand three four thousand dollars to get it all stitched up i don't have the sport chrono so you, you see there's no there's no hump in the center of the on the center of the dash the Sport Chrono doesn't do anything in this car. It doesn't add like any, like on the Carrera S it adds dynamic engine mounts, which I think is a big deal. Um, this car, it doesn't, doesn't do anything for you other than adding a track app that again, I'm not gonna use. So that's the, uh, those are the factory options. So that's the factory option list that we purchased. So I'll just kind of read it off to you again. Silver blue metallic was 700 bucks, $710. Um, the full leather interior with black and Alcantara was $33.20. Uh, extended range fuel tank was a no cost option. Um, Porsche carbon ceramic brakes was uh, $92.10. That's the biggest, most expensive option. Uh, the front axle lift system was $34.90. Again, I would have kept my $3,400. Um, so, I mean, realistically, if you take take the um, the leather, full leather, and the and the front axle lift, you're talking. You know, seven thousand dollars difference. I mean, that's that's real money. So I, you know, I would have been hard pressed to to not to, to to you know I was back and forth on on not checking those two boxes. But again, I was forced because I because I because I got the car. Um, Sound package plus is seven hundred bucks. I absolutely would have done that. The fire extinguisher was one hundred forty bucks. You know, whatever. Um, smoking package was a no cost option. The um, PDLS was thirty one ten. See, I would have probably optioned black headlights and, and black by Xenons, and uh, that would have cost about $1,500 less, and now I'm, what, $8,500 less. Um, Bluetooth, that comes standard. Um, uh, let's see, light design is 510 bucks, so now we're at 9,000 bucks, I wouldn't do that. Floor mats, no cost. Sport design steering wheel and leather, no cost. Um, extended interior package, 690. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, so now we're at, uh, what, 9,700 I wouldn't have done. Um, pedals in aluminum was 625 bucks, I'd absolutely do that. Um, the automatically dimming mirrors with rain sensor, and I wouldn't have that, that's another 690, so there's another 700 bucks, and so now we're at, what, 10,4. Um, PCM is no cost. I'd probably do the silver seatbelts again, 
the, the deviated, the silver seat belt was, were 340 bucks. Um, $295 for the headlight cleaning system, again, exterior color, and then 160 bucks for the aluminum um, uh, fuel cap. So, you know, total sticker with gas guzzler and everything was 156, 385. Um, so you're talking, what, $26,000 in options, of which I probably, I probably would have done full leather. So you're talking, what, an $8,000 difference. So the car I would have spec'd out would have been in the high 140s. Um, and again, I know I'm telling you prices, but I'm gonna have this online anyway. Um, and all you have to do is go and look this up. So I'm just gonna save you the trouble. Um, I'm not trying to brag about the price. It's, the price is a matter of fact. This is what it costs. And this is what I paid. And you don't get discounts on GT3. I paid sticker price for the car. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's, that's the, um, you know, why I, I tend, to, tend, to, tend to give you those numbers. So um, I'm, I'm so pleased with the car. I mean, again, it has a few things that I would probably leave off um, if I were to order again, uh, but nothing that I'm so disappointed that I have other than I wish I had that money in my pocket. Um, you know, the light design package is cool. It's just not worth 700 bucks. You know, the front axle lift, lift system is great to have, but you know, to me, it's not worth 3,500 bucks for the type of driving that I do. Um, so these are just some, some things that I don't think I'll lose that money. Um, uh, the beauty of GT3s is they, they tend to hold their value. Um, but, or if I, you know, I will have some depreciation if I sell it someday with 15 or 20,000 miles on it, but I would expect it not to be too, too much. So um, at least I would hope so. Uh, hopefully, I'll never sell it. But you know, I, I, I've learned to say never. I've learned to not say never. <laughs> Double negative there. Um, so, uh, so those are the factory options, and 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 um, I'll do a full review on the car at some point. I don't know that I'm particularly gifted at reviewing cars, so um, I'm not too excited about doing that. Um, and there's been plenty of other reviews in the GT3, but I'll I'll probably do something at some point. So stay tuned for the options video and uh, or the, uh, the aftermarket modifications video. I'll have that one up soon too.